What if you could take a pill every day that would make you immortal? Well, there's a scientist who's working on that. His name is Aubrey de Grey, and he wants to live forever, probably because he wants to see how long his beard can grow. He plans to isolate every single chemical that causes aging and find an antidote for it. Then he can put them all together in the pill I mentioned earlier, and if you took this pill every day, you could theoretically live forever. Forget about all the details, and just assume there is a pill that you can take every day from the age of, say, 12 that will let you live forever. Would you take it? There are a few things to consider, such as the already overpopulated planet we inhabit. Aubrey argues that with the weight of mortality lifted, people won't want to have kids anymore. Someone tell that to those people on TLC that have enough people in their family to play a full game of baseball with themselves, complete with umpires. Also, our concept of life and success is based on the assumption that you'll live for a finite amount of time. How will we adapt to eternity? I have no idea. And if no one dies, what are funeral directors and embalmers going to do? We also have to ask ourselves, is there any acceptable way to die? See, as the average human lifespan has increased because of medicine, technology, and education, the common causes of death have changed. Up until really recently, infection was a very common way to die. But since antibiotics were discovered, it's not considered normal to die from a bad cut or something. These days, we have awareness campaigns about the number one killer of any subgroup. For instance, heart disease is the leading cause of death in women. And because of this, the American Heart Association launched a campaign to end heart disease. I'm not sure I completely understand this. See, if the number one killer of women was staplers, we should definitely have a campaign about that. But unless we're indeed immortal like Aubrey wants, something is going to be the number one killer. So what should it be if it's not heart disease? Or do you agree with Aubrey that there's just no acceptable way to die and it's something we simply shouldn't have to do? Someone once asked me, would you rather die at 50, surrounded by friends and family, or would you rather live to be 100 but die miserable and alone? It's a quality versus quantity question, and there's no right answer. But let me share with you my theory on life. Say, life equals T times Q, where T equals time and Q equals quality. See, neither of these can be zero for you to be alive, so we all agree on that. Now, if quality can be defined as pi over t, I don't mean pi as in 3.14 kind of pi. I mean pi as in cherry pie, and t is time. So this is the rate at which you enjoy whatever you enjoy most. So again, if life equals t times q, and q is cherry pie over time, then time cancels out, which means that life actually equals cherry pie. And if you're really lucky, it's served a la mode.